Here's a story about a team they met that has an offense that's feeble as they come. They have a few decent bats, but most of them are bums. Here's a story, a team they met that can never get a hit in the clutch. They are always swinging for defenses, but they strike out too much. The feeble bunch, the feeble bunch. That is how the Mets became the feeble bunch. I'd like to thank Aaron York for that one. He said that to me, and boy, it just like completely true. Too good to be true, almost. Uh, and of course, we're recording this show after the Mets, probably their biggest win of the season, at least as of late. And Frank, what's the level of uh, optimism after the Mets comeback win and their back and forth contest and in extra innings? Oh, uh, it's zero. <laughs> it, it is completely zero. That's better than negative, though, where you're probably at after last night's fifth straight loss. By the way, uh, this just in, uh, Lance Lynn, who was leading the American League in uh, ERA, has got some major explaining to do. Why is that? He just got caught. With what, Sticky? Yep. No. Yep. He's been ejected after a for, uh, after a for, uh, of a substance check. Wow, I wonder if it was the spider tack or if it was sunscreen or what. Spider tack, spider tack. <sighs> well, the Mets look like the. Is it me? I I'm watching these games. Is it me or the Mets are the only ones getting checked by the umpires? Do you know the, I haven't seen the other team get checked once, and it looks like the Mets are hitting. Uh, Deadened baseballs while uh, pitching with uh, the live balls from 2019. Pretty much. I mean, Aaron Loop seems like he gets checked every time because he's basically automatic now. And um, the Mets almost didn't survive because Loop and Lugo weren't available today. Familia blew it in the 11th after Conforto. Frank, you did the reverse jinx with Conforto, I see, calling him Michael Cano for. Again, well, that's, how that's used my to see new it. Nickname for him. That's my new nickname for him. Well, like seconds after I saw that tweet, he came through with the uh, the go ahead double. I mean, he just isn't good enough for me. I mean, I mean, does is it me that does his bat always come alive when the Mets season's basically done? Every year. Two years ago, he had probably the best year of his career, but I would agree with you where down the stretch where they really needed to win more games and he, he went ice cold for a period of time and it kind of really hurt them at that point. I mean, every time, it, I mean, it seems like way, way, way more often than uh, not, he, he, he fails in the clutch. Beyond Conforto, Frank, what do you think about Steve Cohen calling out the team and the, particularly the offense this well, morning? Well, bravo, bravo. I think it's a long time coming. Do you feel like they played better because of it? Yeah, better. They, they, they almost got shut out today. Yeah, I mean, it, it was very close uh, to being a shutout. And that was after Di Sclafani exited after an inning and third. Giants bullpen shut them down, but... Gill was amazing again against a real best team in baseball, best record, and then um, you know obviously the clutch performance in the ninth, and then and then in extras as well. Um, now the Mets are down to Patrick Mazika as their starting mm-hmm. catcher too, so things just haven't really been easy there at all. Would it be totally insane if McCann is out for any long length of period of time? Would it be totally insane to consider? given Alvarez a taste of the majors? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think if this were next year and he was in double A, and I think so, I think they would give him a shot maybe. Given I, know the stakes, not, I know he's I, I know he's not 20 yet, but I've, I, I've seen him a couple times at Brooklyn and I'm impressed. Yeah, he's seriously good. Like he should be 2023. He'll be the, Starting catcher opening day, I think, regardless of James McCann still being under contract, because McCann's been very disappointing, especially lately. Well, you won't be paying Alvarez anything. No, yeah, exactly. 
But I mean, Nito is who uh, Tom, Tomas Nito is who Tom was. Tomas Nito is. He's a backup ca- catcher. His approach at the plate was really good from last year, and then carried over the first half of this year. But he's been pretty abysmal offensively lately. Mm-hmm. And then with the Mets, like so common this year, it's been when it rains, it pours that Nito lands on the IL on Monday and then McCann has the back spasm and now probably will go to the IL if he's not ready tomorrow. I asked Rojas um, if he was a serious IL candidate at this point, and and they said it's all going to come down to tomorrow if he's ready. But this is also kind of summed up the season season with the replacement Mets, but they called up Chance Sisko and his first pitch he saw, he laced a RBI double to give them another insurance run in the 12th. So that was that was pretty promising. At least it might earn him a start tomorrow. And, of course, uh, after the game, uh, Anthony Rucker said that reminded him of when he was a player. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, Cisco already had more has more big hits than Rucker did as a Met. Well, Rucker always waxes poetically about his game-tying ninth-inning grand slam in uh, spring training. <laughs> Frank, uh, who who is uh, buzzing you right there? I heard your phone going off. Is that is that Cohen? Is, is are you no, just Strowman? Just a cameo oh. saying that I have more requests. <laughs> How many are you doing per day right now? I'm doing an insane amount. I have sixty requests waiting. Have you turned down any because they've been saying crazy stuff, or have I turn them down it? occasionally, but the price has definitely got to go up. Yeah, I mean. So what are we talking about per day? How many? I've been doing twenty to I twenty if I if I really uh, uh, hunker down I could do forty. What would you charge Strowman for a cameo? I charge him about uh, 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 fifty. You know, I, I hear that uh, uh, Pat, uh, Pat, you've uh, joined the exclusive club of the people that have been blocked by him. Yes, but it's not an exclusive club because he blocks everybody. All I did last night was tweet out. by zero. Just say that he is wrong. Say he don't belong. Blocked by zero. He doesn't end. I I mean. All I did. I, I mean. You could tell him. You could tell him. That his shoe is laces on tight and it'll uh, block you. Well, he was on a blocking spree last night because he obviously drew a lot of criticism for reposting his highlight reel nine times after another soul crushing loss. That would be like that would be like losing the game eighteen to one, almost getting no hit. But the one run is a home run with two outs in the ninth inning, and the guy who hit the home run tweeting it. What are, and, and going back to the day, I got to go, well, I hit a home run. I'm happy. Granted, he did pitch his arm off last night. Uh, he threw he 114 pitches. Well, well, he, did, he, did, he used to be out there trying to kick the ass of his teammates who didn't get a fucking hit for him last night. Yeah, well, you should have seen his Zoom after the game, and this is what led to me getting blocked. Um, he was asked basically why the team hasn't seen results, and he said, no clue. And then basically just walked out and goes in the background as he's leaving. He goes, man, I'm done answering these guys' questions. And all I did was tweet out what he said, and I got a block. So basically, you have to be, Marcus Stroman was so wonderful today. And Marcus Stroman is so wonderful every day. It, every day, everyone should be like Marcus Stroman. You know, even when he sucks, he's good. You know, he should be the best pitcher ever. And I really do like you, Marcus Stroman. He is really good, and he deserves better, but uh, my colleague Tim Healy tweeted out about how Stroman, he tweeted out Stroman's numbers and then added at the end nine reposts of his self-highlight after the latest loss, and Drew Smith quote tweeted it and was like, real story should be Marcus Stroman pitched his arm off and gave a uh, beleaguered bull, uh, taxed bullpen a, a rare night off in a great effort. And it's like, yeah, but that doesn't tell the whole story because the team is just losing night after night and not producing at the plate. Uh, speaking of blocking, I mean, not, not only are you two blocked, um, but our account is. So I the actual, our account was, at yeah. Frank at Frank the Tank Pod on Twitter is blocked by Sherman. So he must have made the connection. So I am the last member 
of this core, I think, that is not blocked yet. So if he's listening right now, I'm sure I'll be blocked by tomorrow. But right now... Blocked by zero. I think Frank also, when Strowman, if he did click on my profile to block me, seeing Frank's credentials in my bio with the pod and, and Frank's handle, I'm sure earned me an automatic block. I'm not blocked. I just checked. I'm still I'm still able to tweet at him, but I, I guess it's only positive things. So, um, I, I mean, there are a lot of players I've been a lot more critical of him than him. Well, that's the understatement of the century. <laughs> you <Like> get it. <laughs> For the most part, uh, most of my Marcus Stroman tweets are positive. Yeah, I like. I mean, I like. I think if anything, I think he's a good pitcher. Yeah. I, I, I kind of want to see him come back next year. I don't think he will though, because he can't stand the New York media. I don't know about that. I, 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 I truly think, I truly think there's only one, the one thing that motivates him. Well, money talks in any situation, so that that would be the only aspect. Is if the highest offer is from the Mets, he comes back. Yeah, but he really doesn't like the media. He avoids us at all costs, and he does not like answering our questions at all. And for me personally, I've only had positive exchanges with him a few times, and and last night, of course, ended in a block. Well, so. uh, then 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 he'll go somewhere, and in the media, the, 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 does he really want to go a place where? There's no pressure in uh, the media. I mean, uh, he go to Baltimore. I mean, there's no media pressure down there. Back to Toronto, maybe. Ugh. Uh, see, that's why I didn't like that trade in the beginning. Wait, why? I don't like the fact that Mets gave up two prospects for him, and uh, I don't. If they don't sign him uh, long term, then it's a bad trade. Granted, though, they did get over two years of him so i guess it did it did work out i mean he opted out last year gave them half season 2019 and then a full season this year a very good one to say the least and the two guys they traded anthony k flamed out and swr just got traded by the blue jays again and he was struggling this year in double a so out of all the bad trades brody made that was not one of them i have to say i mean pete crow armstrong he had that surgery but if he comes back, that trade's going to haunt the Mets forever. Yeah, of course it will, because there's po- it's probably not realistic that they sign by as long-term. He has the worst plate approach I've ever seen, and zero plate discipline. I mean, he, he, he honestly is just nightmarishly bad. Yeah, and apparently the Mets were never even real players on Chris Bryant, which which sucks to hear, obviously. Well, they got it. They, they, they got to try to get the back to bring struck up. They need it. They need to blow past that, that that tax threshold. Yeah, I think Cohen will blow past it after this year. They need wholesale changes on offense, especially since the uh, one of the proposals is calling uh, for the tax to be uh, uh, going effect at 180 million. Yeah, which is crazy. And then the floor of 100 million, which the floor is not a bad idea because you have teams spending like what. 60 million like the pirates or something crazy like that um but i mean what it comes down to nick castellanos might opt out and he very much should considering the year he's having so that could be another name for the mets potential conforto replacement even if conforto accepts the qualifying offer and stays for another year whatever it takes to win at this point i mean we got to stop thinking like the old mets where it's like oh it's really nice to have the you know, the farm systems, you got the guys that come up through the farm or whatever, just friggin' win. Get the best players in here, pay for them. I don't care how it's done. I think they, I think they need to be very uh, aggressive. Very aggressive. You have aggressive to. And, uh, and uh, they need to stop looking at players like Dom Smith and J.D. Davis's solutions. Dom Smith's a nice compliment player, but not your cleanup hitter, not in the middle of the order. There, back, there, clearly. There's too many guys that have to be playing at the at, have their best year for the Mets to be successful. You just need guys Davis, that are perennial all stars every JD year Davis. and are great. JD Davis is a very average player. Yeah, he's a bench player, part time player. He's good he's good in that role. But he's obviously he's not a an everyday player. At this point. And, uh, and Francisco, Francisco Lindor mount, bouncing back is a must. Yeah, that, that if he isn't the superstar that he was signed to be, that'll be a disaster for many years. 
I mean, Jeff McNeil needs to go back to just being the, the slash and burn hitter. This, the pull, the trying to pull the ball is not working for him. No, he had a nice double in the in the twelfth uh, though today. He's been in a bad slump recently, but hopefully he'll come out of it and kind of be the hitter who he used to be, which is uh, hit at a very high contact rate. What killed the Mets though this year, especially in the deadline, is. Yeah, they have some good top prospects, but that's the only thing that they had attractive to offer to other teams, and they weren't giving those guys up. They had no prospect depth. You see how the Yankees got Gallo and Rizzo? It's because they have depth. They're not top-heavy in their system, but they have a lot of guys the well, lower uh, levels to trade. Well, uh, for two straight years, they had a, uh, a, a GM that only drafted players that were signed by CAA. The Mets, yeah, with Brody. You're right. I mean, he would... He might go down in history as one of the worst general managers of all time. Yeah, because he was an agent. He was not even qualified to be a general manager. So, But in other news, um, I think you guys probably saw my report today. Um, a source told me that Jacob DeGrom, pretty much it's 99.9% certain that he's not coming back this year. Well, that's really going to suck, and I'm not surprised either. No, it's best that- case Best case scenario, Frank, he's his MRI comes out okay at the end of next week, and then he gets back in mid mid September maybe. But that's a really big if at this point. The only way you let him come back is if you're like one game out. Yeah, and even then he just still and and when you think about it, the Mets' last playoff appearance, Degrom was hurt too, and that's why they weren't built to go deeper in the playoff site. But you know who is built to go deep? America's that? first. An original hot dog company. They're always going deep. And I'm talking about Charles Feltman, who invented the hot dog, and Feltman's was revived in 2015 by a pair of brothers from Brooklyn, Joe Quinn, a former Army captain, and Michael. And they did it to honor their late brother, Jimmy, who was killed in the September 11th attacks. Of course, the uh, 20th anniversary is coming up. And... uh, Feltman is run by a team of military veterans that have collectively served over 110 months in combat. Feltman is now one of the fastest growing natural food companies in the United States. Their 100% beef all natural hot dogs are available for purchase online and at WholeFoods.com. You know, they, they ship super fast and they will be the perfect addition to your next family cookout. You know, and allow me to be frank is presented to you by Feltman and proudly so. Yes, we are. Yes, we are indeed. And, of course, Felton's now is bacon. So, Frank, have you gotten a chance to have that with the hot dog yet? I just don't have the fucking time. I'm doing too many cameos. <laughs> yeah, man. You got. You should do it at the same time. Like, give someone, like, a cameo of you doing Tank's Cook. Just, like, mm-hmm. throw, it, throw it in the oven and be like, hey, this is going to be a cameo. I'm gonna well, I'm going to try to get about uh, After we're done, done here, I'm going to try to... Try to knock off about 30 cameos at least tonight. The man's a machine. Workhorse there, Frank. Workhorse. Um, uh, now, speaking of uh, Army veterans, I mean, I, I feel sorry for anyone that had to go over to Afghanistan and watch what's happening right now. Yeah, so that's actually, I'm glad you brought that up, and I'm sure Nick can expand on that because of ZBT, but my brother spent... He served four months on a tour over in Afghanistan back in 2016. And like he, my brother was a ranger. He was he was a five year veteran, and he said there was no reason to be there at the time because you know nothing really was going on. And like there's been plans for a long time to pull out of there, but it's just the way we did it, kind of in overnight, very abruptly, that just kind of led everybody to go back in and and they took full control over. And now it kind of leaves us very vulnerable to more, t- you know big terror attacks on the soil again. Here's the thing. If we're going to be over in a foreign land and we're just going to sit there and play bodyguard for the people that we install, who was a weak army to begin with, while the Taliban just waits and attacks, waits and attacks, waits and attacks, of course this is going to happen. The only way to de- defeat the Taliban is to destroy the Taliban. And if you're just going to sit back and let them coexist, uh, I mean, I mean, seriously. The military's job is to blow things up and break things. I mean, uh, 
the, the, the thoughts and minds get people killed. Yeah, and it's and it's really just a sad situation. What's going on over there, Nick? What what were they talking about on ZBT about that? I mean, first off, I encourage anyone out there to go listen to it. It's a phenomenal episode. Um, they really just uh, the three of them poured their their hearts out. Obviously, um, you know, um, you know, Kate, you know, going, you know, she's been in Afghanistan. She's been there, so. Um, the sentiment really was you know, kind of just what you said is that everyone knew what had to be done. It was inevitable, but it was more about there was really no plan in place or whatever plan was in place. It was just a complete utter mess. And that, you know, to, to quote Kate, you know, she said, you know, America's better than this. And, you know, you, those you know, when you, better. when you have politicians running wars and running wars based on polls and. And what what the. Uh, what the uh, focus groups say, that's not the way to win wars. Uh, we could not win a World War II right now because of just how we just, just the media runs everything. And, and, it, and it's, more, uh, it's more important to have, uh, to look good than to, to actually do, to do good. And, and, and uh, seriously, I mean, if, if we, the, the Taliban should have been destroyed. We should have killed as many people from the Taliban as possible. Be, the, the, beat them into a pulp. Beat them into submission. That's how you secure the future. And, and that's man. what the military does best. That's what the military does best. There's no military that's better when you uh, take when you let them fight with both hands. And all, too often, do not our military has one hand tied behind their back. Yeah, because it's ironic that the politicians are the ones who make the decisions with all the military and everything we do. Which it's really just very. It doesn't make sense that they are the ones who don't Politicians me. suck. Let's just play to, to plain and simple. There's not one good politician on either side of the aisle. They all suck. Yeah. So I mean, to that point, like if you, if you know, speaking of like you know, Frank said like other side of the aisle. Like if you're looking for really an unbiased perspective on it from people with experience. Again, I really do encourage everyone to go out and listen to that episode. It was Tuesday's episode of Zero Block 30. Um, just really good insight into people who have experience in that area. But yeah, it's just just so tragic because it's very much out of sight, out of mind. Like it's been going on forever and then no one's really paying attention to it. And then this happens and it's like the biggest story in the world. And it's I like, mean, it's you know, Vietnam all over again. I mean, uh, the, 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 the country, the country is basically a shithole and we tried our best to try to build it and we just couldn't do it because we didn't want to, we didn't want to offend people. Yeah. But, um, just moving stop. on yeah. from the, uh, from the talks of obviously the tragedies going on in the world right now. Um, Frank, you have a little beef, a new beef going on at Barstool that we were wanting to get to. Uh, Frank versus KFC. Frank was right versus shut the fuck up, Frank. What are your comments? Uh, what's going on with that? Well, I, I honestly don't know why KFC has brought in so hook, line, and so sinker into Steve Cohen. You know, Steve Cohen did something good today. He came out and he spoke out and he basically ripped the team a new one. That's all I'm doing. And I saw this team, even when they were in first place for 90 days, what was I saying all year? They don't pass my eye test. They don't pass the eye test. They, they, they don't hit. They, they, they fail in the clutch too many times. They have too many poor swings. The pitching's been fine. It hasn't been as good as it was in the first half over the last month. But it's still decent pitching staff. I mean, just, just think about it this way. If they were scored as many runs as the Phillies, who are the 15th ranked team in scoring runs, they'd probably be somewhere from 10 to 15 games over 500. Imagine if they had the offense this year. Who was that? Imagine if the Mets had the offense that the Blue Jays had. Well, I'm not dreaming. <laughs> well, I, well I, think, I think that's part of it though frank is that you're not dreaming you're very much a realist and you know a lot of people have been asking kfc to you know send that apology your way you know and he hasn't yet and obviously you know the mets they, they did win today but you still stand firm they, they didn't pass your eye test and i think for all the listeners out there 
Frank was right, and the eye I test mean, is the uh, eye test. I mean, let's put it this way: the uh, the the starting going to today, they were four for the last forty-one runners in scoring position. They had two runners on base. They had a runner in scoring position in the first inning. Conforto uh, struck out, and uh, J.D. Davis struck out on a half swing ball in the dirt. And speaking about this, these check swings. I mean, the guy, the guy for the Giants practically went like all the way around, and the uh, umpire at first base said, uh, called a check swing in the 10th inning. I mean, Louis Rojas looked like he's about to shit his pants. <laughs> Especially since they've been very aggressive in calling those check swing strikes in this series. All too. series, all series. But JD Davis with a, a just awful check swing, ball in the dirt. Then for the rest of the game, uh, they did. They, the only base runner they had was uh, 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 Jonathan uh, VR, who, who who seems like it, it gets picked off at least once a week. Pretty much, and then he had that other base running error. In extra innings too, where he got. I thrown mean, out he on might be the bunt. dumbest man ever to get the dumbest base runner I've ever seen. It was a bad bunt, but you you can't be running in that situation when you see that it's that hard hit. But yeah, so you have that issue, and the next time they had a uh, the, uh, a threat wasn't until Pete Alonso got hit on the elbow. Yeah. And Michael Conforto got a single. I mean, that was how he's got to run home and the sacrifice fly. I mean, that's how close they came to being shut out. What went on with the uh, on the rundown today with KFC? Well, he's trying to say that I'm not a real meth fan because I'm not positive. But do you think he's doing a little bit on the other side as well? Where he sees the stance you're taking, so he's being like, oh, he's, overly he's, he's, positive all the KFC's time. He's a total contrarian. That's what that's his mm. whole stick. Contrarian. Okay, so that's what you heard. It, everyone, KFC's a contrarian. You heard it here. Um, we'll probably put that into the Twitter space. What are we drinking tonight? What are we drinking? Tonight? Uh, Diet Pepsi. <laughs> Diet Just, Pepsi. Uh, keeping it, keeping it pretty simple tonight. No right? salt shots tonight. What was that, Pat? No salt shots. Oh, I got the salt shot right here. Oh, do one for KFC. Do one for the Big Mets win. There it is. Assault shot. KFC. KFC always been super negative, too. So, like, this is kind of a newfound thing that him and Clem are. And the, you got a leap pod. They are big believers in Steve Cohen, obviously. But it's it's taken away from their negativity that we've seen over the years. I, am, I guess I wouldn't rope Clem into it too much. I mean, he just is someone who tempers his expectations. KFC's obviously been over, overly pessimistic with this I team. I mean... I mean, I, did, did I expect them to, 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 to? I expected them to be a playoff contender this year, and to me, they're not a playoff contender. Too many, point. too many injuries, though. Also, I mean, I understand that's not a full excuse, but I mean, this team's just been ravaged. I think it's just. I don't care about that. You know, if if that was the only problem, that'd be fine. But it's the poor at bats, the poor swings, the 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 the, the fact that it seems like it takes that they're stirring cement with a straw to get a run in. And I'm not talking a regular straw. I'm talking about a straw, a paper straw that they have at City Field. Not that Chili Davis should still have a job because it's not like he was that too great at his job, but seems like a better hitting coach than Hugh Quattlebaum at this point. Uh, and, and speaking of Hugh Q, has there ever been anyone that's been cucked more than him? <laughs> I I'll mean, let, let's, let's face it. This is the guy that's a real hitting coach. Yet they keep releasing videos of this fake hitting coach, Johnny yeah. Stevenson. Who they haven't talked about in a while, actually. Well, it's embarrassing. About Pete's positivity during this stretch and, and the previous stretch before they swept the Nets. You realize that, uh, Don, that, that Donnie Stevenson really is Pete Alonso. Yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah, we know that. I mean... Pete Alonso, Pete Alonso needs to stop being goofy. I I think he's fine. It's just that like when when he, it's cool when he, it's fine that he does it, but when the team is playing that bad, it's almost like you're insulting our intelligence by exactly. by by still putting on the same. Like 
it's fine. Like, I love his personality. I love how he was with the Derby. And I think we need someone like that. But we also, if you're going to be a leader, you also need to say it when things are just shitty. Like, you can't just come out here and be like, you need to kick just, ass. Sometimes. Like, 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 just believe in us. Like, yeah, we get that. It's our whole entire slogan of our lives. Just, you know, you got to believe. But if you are going to be the literal, if you're going to be the face of this team, we need you to also call out the team when things aren't going right. I Doesn't mean, have, does, that's how I feel. I mean, and I love Alonzo. I love Alonzo. Big time. Uh, what, 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 when, 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 what was the game against? Uh, was it against the Phillies? I think it was against the Phillies or. It was after they got swept, Philly. That, uh, yeah, it was the first game in Philadelphia. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, it, was, it was either a tie game or we were down one, and Marcus Stroman came up to the plate with the bases loaded. Yeah, it was the first game. And they ordered him not to swing the bat. Bases loaded, nobody out. They ordered him not to swing the bat. And then Brandon Immel comes up, first pitch swinging, he rips into a double play. I mean, why isn't Mar- – not that I think Marcus Stroman is a great hitter or not, but don't you think that uh, he's good enough to make a good enough contact? He had a single last night. In? And he had a single last night. He, he's gotten hits at times. Yeah, I remember the exact of that. I remember saying to myself, like – And then Brandon oh, Immel. Who watches every pitch go down the middle of the plate? Picks this time to go first pitch swinging. Well, he's known an aggressive hitter. I mean, Brandon Brandon Nimmo has not had a good uh, good stretch either. No, them really have. Besides Pete, in the last like week or so, that also had sprinkled in a over twenty one stretch. I mean, just. There used to be a saying that when you're in a slump, just get hit. Stop trying to swing for the fucking fences. And that goes back to the Donnie Stevenson, it's a home run or nothing. Hmm. And I tell you what. Right now, it's nothing. Yeah, and you know what else is nothing? Having trouble below the belt. Hmm. Hmm. And, you know, listeners across the galaxy, all the way from Australia to Houston... You know, they have some few problems. But, you know, our friends at Manscaped have cleared everything for takeoff with their fourth generation brand new lawnmower 4.0. Yes, the 4.0. You know, it will kick your pubes to the next planet with the performance package 4.0. The orbits in your pants will feel like you're in zero gravity. You know, it's the best tools for the job, and that's what you need. You need the best tools for the job. From the leaders in male grooming, and that's Manscaped. You know, you can join 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped and get your rocket ready for takeoff by going to manscaped.com for 20% off with free shipping by using the promo code TANK. You know, the first schedule lift off of the 4.0 trimmer, the spaceship is here to guide you on your journey to trim your balls, your butt, and even your anus. So get 20% off with Free shipping at using the promo code TANK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off. And free shipping with the promo code TANK at manscaped.com. For a clean trinity and beyond, your space balls will most certainly thank you. Beautiful. Yes, they will. And getting back to the bats, when we were talking about the offense and how the pitching staff dropped off, although it's been a little better as of late, but they had a top five pitching staff in the first half that ranked 20th since DeGrom went out after the all the start of the all-star break. The pitching was making up, and the bullpen it was making up for lack of offense. Where they would score just enough runs to win, and then the pitching staff would hold down the game late. Yeah, the pitching And that's staff why people been, thought it was different. The pitching half has been uh, pitched a little mediocre. Uh, Carlos Carrasco, I mean, I mean, Cookie, you know what type of cookie he's been? He's been that type of cookie that comes in the Danish tins. You know those cookies that taste like terrible? That uh, the only people who buy them are 80-year-olds uh, when their grandkids are coming over, so their kids won't ask for any more cookies again by offering them those cookies and knowing how bad they are. Yeah, you put them in the tin. Yeah, I know. And then when um, they're done, they, you uh, use those tins for sewing. Yeah, and they got the shitty crumbs at the bottom of them. What's the last cookie you had? You remember the last cookie you had? The last cookie I had? 
I got a cookie of well, you know, I got some fig newtons in the fr- in the uh, my no. pantry. Does that count? No, we're not gonna count a fig newton as a cookie. Uh, this is no way. The last cookie I had, I got a cook a chocolate chip cookie at Wawa. Wawa's pretty good. I have one pretty close to me. Um, it got some good stuff there. Um, Frank, I had a question for you. A um, little little uh, pivot from the Mets, but are you gonna watch SummerSlam? No. 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 Interesting. Kind of feel like you were a little going down the the, the wrestling rabbit hole a few weeks ago, but I just wanted to check in. See what's uh, up. If you want to take me to a time machine and let me watch SummerSlam 1999, I'd watch it. Or you can. It's on Peacock. You can you can stream it right now. Uh, I just but... can't. I just can't get in, in, involved in the uh, the uh, current uh, wrestlers. I I think though I think you should hook up with Brandon Walker at some point though. I think you, I think getting you on on wrestling would be a nice little. Uh, I think maybe get like the spark in you. I mean, I, I just yeah. find it. I just find the current WWE so boring. Yeah, no, I, we, we, it gets that feedback as well. It's like watching the Mets sometimes. It's like watching the Mets offense right now. That's what I. I mean, better. I'm hoping AEW really starts to like becoming like a, a major one on their side. Well, I'm going and, and, the yeah. cre- and kick up the creativity. Yeah, they're on. They were on just now. They just finished their Wednesday show. I'm going to All Out. I'm sitting um, ringside on the guardrails. I think a few of the other Barstool folks are going out there as you well. You know what's great is uh, every now and then we get some wrestlers in. And yeah. There was this, I don't know the guy's name. He's, uh, I, well, one of the guys there was one of the guys from like New Day or something like that. Yeah. It was, so it was Xavier Woods. Um, it was Xavier Woods. You had um, Liv Morgan, and you had Omos, who's yeah. seven, who's seven foot three. If you look. Mostly at one of my recent soda reviews, in like the last two seconds, you can see them behind me. Yeah, they were probably blown away. Did they? Did, did you go up to them at all? Did they come up to you and be like, "Oh my god"? No, they didn't, say anything. they didn't say anything to me. I just saw them. All I know is, all I know is, almost looked like he was about to. Uh, I mean, I mean, jeez, this guy was like a, a beanstalk. I mean, I mean. Yeah, he's a legit. Hey, seven. how's it going? He's a legit seven for three. So I mean, the guy, the guy, the guy was was it was just tall. That's all I. The only thing I got out of him. Yeah, um, interview was great though. That's on the wrestling YouTube channel as well. Um, well, I saw. I I haven't seen the blog yet, but I'm actually kind of interested in it. The uh, the tour of uh, the warehouse. The warehouse. I, yeah, they, I actually watched some of those A and E shows. I watched the uh, the A and E biographies and the Lost Treasures. Yeah, no, it's it's good stuff um, because it's not that I don't like wrestling. It's just I don't like new wrestling. I hear you. Yeah, but the but the old stuff is always good. It's it's evergreen. You could always just turn it on. I, I mean, it. I mean, ever since they did that family, the, uh, the, I, I I I remember when they changed from WWE to W uh, WWF to WWE. It was get the f out. Yeah, get the f out when the yeah, pages came from. Yeah, well, it was get the uh, get the f out was get the fun out. Yeah, it definitely took a turn. It definitely certainly took a turn. And then they went from uh, wanted to get away from the uh, the lewdness of the uh, the attitude generation, and they lost something there. Yeah, they went they went a little bit PG on us. Um, what up, Pat? Pat, what else you got? Frank, have you caught in the Yankees and Red Sox series? Yeah, I'm watching that game right now, actually. Uh, the, the Boston Red Sox look like the Mets. Yeah, Carabas is Carabas is not having fun right now. No, okay, at least Mets right now. I, I mean, the, 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 the Boston Red Sox actually might be in a worse uh, tailspin than the Mets right now. And notice how the Red Sox and Mets both were the ones who whiffed at the deadline. I still don't think the Mets would have made a huge difference. I, I think there's just too much going on. With I the just team. I did. the one thing I is 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 will they resign Baez? And if they do, what is his position going to be? And can they get him to get uh, back to the MVP form he was? Not, I know I, think- I I know he's best buds with uh, Lindor. with Lindor, and I think Lindor. I maybe I'm crazy for thinking this. I think next year he has a major bounce back season. Lindor, I yeah. think he's legit. I think he's a superstar. I, I'm, I'm not near, I'm not as worried about Lindor. He's, he's like not even close to being one of the biggest issues I have. I mean, uh, 
I mean, the, 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 I never thought that I'd miss Lindor as much as I missed him. I mean, even though he was only batting 218, it seemed like he actually brought something to the table. He does. They have missed him greatly. And uh, basically been playing with him for the whole second half. They're 13 and 20 since he got injured. And so. they basically say that he, like, on the field, he, like, positions people. Yeah, he's he's a leader, and he's a leader in the clubhouse and on the field and off the field. He He's made an impact in more ways than one, and he was hitting better at the plate. And, and, and so one thing I noticed is when a pitcher starts, like, struggling, he always walks in and says something, especially to uh, people like uh, Edwin Diaz. Who, by the way, Edwin Diaz uh, also probably – Along with Miguel, I think his pitching performance today. Uh, yeah. Diaz, two scoreless innings. Scott gave well, Ed, Edwin chance. Diaz, what he did today was amazing. Yeah. And the key was that quick seven pitch inning, uh, the seven pitch ninth. And then um, in extras, the fact that. Yeah, well, when, 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 you, pass, when, when you fail to score in the top of the 10, you're, you're basically, the game is pretty much lost. The Giants made a big error, though. They had first base open, and or at least maybe they were in a position where they could walk Jeff McNeil with two outs and made the Mets pinch hit for Diaz. Blankenhorn was out on deck, and they didn't do it. They pitched to McNeil, and he made an out, and they got out of the inning. But it meant Edwin Diaz got to come on for 10. So that was a mistake right there by Gabe Kapler and the Giants that people don't really talk about. Yeah. How about this Jake Reed, too, all of a sudden? His two appearances. You're breaking up, Pat. What'd you say? Jake Reed, the Mets' new acquisition in the bullpen. He has come in and, and pitched very well in his two appearances. Yeah, he's been decent. Very solid. Uh, good uh, good, uh, good work in the uh, to get the save. To, well, he didn't get the save. But still, he set them down one, two, three, even though they had a runner in scoring position. Yep. Well, well what the fucking gimmick baseball. Yeah, but on that and, note, and I was um, very, and I was definitely concerned about Jerry's familiar, who's been terrible in the second half. He it, brought back it, that stupid song. He was good until he was overworked, uh, starting last week, where he had to pitch in three straight appearances, and it was a mistake on Friday going to him over Loop against Will Smith. And they said it was righty righty, but Will Smith can't hit lefties, and Aaron Loop was fresh and available, and. That lost them the game on Friday. I mean, they had he has that stupid song. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. What's it called? Oh, uh, what's it called? It's all a I know well is known song. All I know is it goes familiar, familiar, I, 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 familiar, familiar. I miss you singing that when he would melt down, Frank. Haven't heard that in a while. I guess that's a good thing if we haven't heard him sing it in a while. Yeah, well, I, well, did on, I did it on my TikTok. You're everywhere. Multimedia star Frank Flemming. He's on TikTok. He's on Cameo. His phone's buzzing right now. Um, multimedia star. How is TikTok treating you, Frank? How do you like the TikTok game? Just another platform. That's right, to make that money. Yeah, yep. even even Dave said, you know, I was listening to Dave's podcast and he said, Frank the Tank, now he works hard. That's what he said. A workhorse. What's well, like to hear that from the boss, Frank? Doesn't stop. Did, uh, my Chicago blog came out this week too. Yeah, I saw that. Um, how how was how how what how did you think it came out? Um, look, uh, like fun. Uh, Ari did a great job on it. Yeah, Ari is great. Ari is also the producer on wrestling too. He, uh, yeah, he he always does a good job. I, I thought it was really good. The intro was funny with you singing. That was really good. <laughs> and of course, I came up. I found uh, the, someone sent the uh, office a uh, a box of the apple pie hot dogs. Apple pie hot dogs? Oh, yes. The review came out today, right? How was yep. it? The hot dog could have been better, but it was something really good. That's great. It was not a quality hot dog. It was not in the Feltman's hot dogs. But I got the recipe, so if I ever want to make it on my own, I can make it with a Feltman's hot dog, and it will definitely be a fire. I mean, uh, certainly. It's a cook idea. Okay. And uh, you know who actually had, you know who made the recipe, don't you? No. 
Guy Fieri. Ah, Diner well, Drive-Ins and here. Dives. That's be good then. You watch that show, Frank? Yeah, I watch it from time to time. Do you have a favorite episode or just... Uh... I like when he goes to New Jersey. Yeah, it is good, man. Do we you, we you watch Bar Rescue? I've watched a few of that. Those shows. That big brain uh, judge right there, John Taffer. Yeah. Uh, you know what show I kind of like? Uh, Kitchen Nightmares. Yeah, you probably like when he yells at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But very, very, very. Uh, I went to a Africa. diner this. I went to a diner this week. Which one? In Jersey. Bendix Diner. Bendix Diner. What'd you get? A hamburger and fries. Plain hamburger. Right? Yeah. Fries and what? And any score? Any any comments? Feedback? Well, the waiter was blind. Like li- like he, a li- like literally blind. Literally blind. blind. Did, did, a he, did a good did job. Did a good job. Did a good job. They told you this, or you, or like you knew, or like did you make your own? No, he said he was blind. Because when he brought the food over, he goes, "I need help trying to get it on the table. I, I can't see." You think he was just trying to get a bigger tip? No, I actually. Uh, you tested him, like you I, gave uh, him a flinch or something. No, like when that? I when he, when I found out about it, I actually looked it up online, and apparently there's been articles about this guy. Oh wow! But I mean, that's... the problem is. Whoever runs this diner needs to fix it up. Well, I mean, the outside, the letters are falling off the building. Was yeah, I mean, the food at least? What? Was the food good at least? Eh, it was mediocre. What made you stop there? I went to a card show in uh, Garfield. And then I went to go do, uh, after the card show in Garfield, I wanted to. Uh, get uh, lunch and I didn't want to go a place I've been before so I did a uh, search of nearby diners and that was one of the ones that came up it came up and when you were approaching it though did you regret your decision did you have a bad feeling when you saw the decor on the outside in the presentation mm, no you gave it the benefit of the doubt yeah yeah I, I, well, I like New Jersey diners so it's just yeah. another diner that I, that I've been to I was at the Skylark Diner on uh, on Sunday. I brought my daughter there. It was, that, that's a phenomenal diner. Where is it at? It's uh, around Edison. Mm. It's around Edison. So it's a phenomenal diner. They do everything is great. Top to bottom. So. Who would you go with, Frank? I went by myself. Myself, so, okay. Solo diner trips are great. I love okay. a solo diner trip. Then I, uh, then I try to uh, find the Paramus Mini Golf Place. And my GPS got me lost in Patterson. <laughs> oh, nah, not a great place to get lost in. We have it. We actually have an ask the tank when we get to that about that about mini golf. Not about mini golf, but there's a suggestion for you, actually. So whenever we get to that, I will All break right. that out. I played mini golf um, a couple of weeks ago. Actually, very very good experience, Frank. I thought of you while I was there too. There's some places uh, where you can't. You're too close to the water in Hoboken. You can't place bets because in New York it's still not legal. Well, they tried to annex everything. I mean, they took uh, the Statue of Liberty from us. They did, right? That, that was a New Jersey. It was a New Jersey thing, and they and they freaking took it. I they saw took that. It. I saw that clip. They took it from us. Bastards. But we got a uh, tank this week. Yes, we do. Um, there's a there's a bunch coming in. I mean, we we're again, guys, we're knocking on that ten thousand followers on on Twitter. So if you're out there, you know, make sure that you're you know you're following us on Twitter. Um, but for acid tank, so this is from Tylento sixty nine. Um, tank, have you thought of bowling as a new hobby to replace mini golf to take your mind off the feeble Mets? I, I never could be a bowl. Those fit in the, the, my fingers are too fat to get in the, the bowl. I always get the fucking gutter balls. I, I I I just can't find a ball to ever like suit me. Are you too prideful to use bumpers? Is that why? I don't want to use bumpers. Yeah, you just too pride. I agree. I mean, as a grown ass man. Although if, if worse comes worse, I'll just roll it like uh, like uh, with two hands. I feel like you and Doug's in a bowling tournament would probably do good numbers. You guys would probably lose, but. You know, I think I feel like that would do good numbers. You guys probably look like, you know, your your quintessential ballers. Yeah, I just can't find the right ball. 
Yeah, maybe I can help you. I'm actually a two-time city champion. So maybe I can help you on that department. Um, Let's see. So um, here's a good one, very on topic for um, our our sponsors, what we're presented by. Henry B. at Ann underscore experts wants to know, if Feltman's hot dog or Feltman's of Coney made a signature hot dog after you, what would you name it? The Feltman's Frank Frank. The Feltman's Frank Frank. Sounds like a winner. Um, if our, uh, you know, if our partners out there hear that, um, maybe we can get on that. Let's see what else do we have here. Um, da, 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 here we go. Well, how about this? The Feltman's Frank Footer. That's a good one. Yeah, that, that is a good one. I'm surprised. That's actually an interesting idea. Maybe I felt it's come out with a uh, exclusive. Edition hot dog. I think that's not the worst idea in the world. Yeah. Um, John Von Arks, the fourth, wants to know. He's at JVA4. Frank, is your Apple charging brick working yet? Apple charging plug? No, your brick. Remember you had the meltdown because your your brick wouldn't charge? Uh, yeah, I got that. I had to buy another one. All right, well, there you go, John. He got another one. Um, Lou Ragu, at Lou at Louis Ragu 612 wants to know, hey, Frank, how much money did you spend at the NSCS with Doug's? Let me see. 50, 60, uh, maybe about $400. It's actually a decent amount of cash right there. Um, um, here's something I, I got. Uh, the, these were, uh, they actually had cut the price down from 25. To the, they were 10% off each of them. And I got these two cards Japanese Saru Ala O cards. Wow. 25, what was that? 25 a pop, that says? $25. Well, they was uh, 10% off. Not bad. By the way, speaking of that, do you hear the Tigers Hall of Fame broadcaster got suspended for impersonating Shohei Otani on, on air last night? What an idiot. It was like the dumbest thing he could have done. You just got to know what you're doing. I mean, I don't know. I, I want to I wanna make sure that we uh, we finish on a good one here. So Lego at Lego Barstool, I feel like we've seen this one before. Um, Frank, besides the Mets winning, what makes you truly happy in life? I don't know. Seeing different things. Okay. The Boston Red Sox just take the fucking cake. How so? I just saw Renfro just hit a home run. Wait a minute, and you'll see. The dugout celebration down five to two in the ninth inning. Oh, the shopping cart. Yes. Yeah. All that. No, no Boston. You could do that when you're leading. You look like assholes doing that down five to two in the ninth inning. Yeah, or if you tie. Yeah, tying also would uh, would uh, suffice doing something like that. You look like an you look like a bunch of assholes. We're doing that, hitting a solo home run when you're down five to one in the ninth inning. And Chapman's just not automatic anymore. He's just back from the IL, but he he literally like imagine if this was actually a close game. He gives up that home run. He's just he's been so shaky. I I mean seriously, what the what the fuck are the Boston Red Sox doing? I mean that's something the Mets would do. I was just going to say that. It's very Mets-esque. And, and, and the only thing, the, the difference is if the Mets did that, they'd probably get fucking hurt. <laughs> <laughs> probably. <sighs> Got one uh, more ask tank question? or No, that's it. Uh, I just want to make sure to tell everyone out there, um, just to get our plugs in, um, just a reminder to you know follow us at Frank the Tank Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Like I said, we would love to hit that 10,000 follower mark. Um, and obviously, Instagram will put up stuff there new every day. We're going to be active on stories. Um, we have Frank's YouTube page. Please follow that. You know, Frank, he's, you know, what are you at, Frank, right now? Where, where are we sitting? Uh, are we at past 20K? We're past 20K and we're, we're trudging our way to 21K. All right, there we go. So 21K. Let's get to 25K. Let's give Frank a nice number there. You can find Frank at 
NJTank99 on Twitter. You can fi- find Pat at Ragaza Report. And you can find myself at Nick B Media on Twitter. So please follow us all there. Um, and yeah, um, you know, just look forward for more more frank content. By the way, too, I, I'm knocking on the door at 5,000 followers on Twitter. So I'd like to get there hopefully soon. I'm at, I think I'm at 48. 50 there we go. Let's now, do that. So. Let's get uh let's let's get Pat over the hump and Frank I'll be I'll be in the office on Monday actually. Yeah, I hear that. Yeah. By the way, get this. I just read something interesting. Notre Dame is going to push hard to get Arch Manning. Wow. That'd be interesting. That'd be something. They say Arch Manning is going to be the next big star. Yeah, of course. He's got the ball line. He's got the pedigree. I mean uh they, they, they said that uh, they, they, he was like, uh, when he was in eighth grade a couple of years ago, he was like, uh, he, he was throwing passes that like, uh, it looked like, uh, like he was already ready for college. Yeah, no, I've seen a lot of stuff uh, with Arch Manning. He's like a highlight real tape machine already. Double Super Bowl like his, uh, like his uncle Eli. Yeah. I mean, what the, the, the Manning family... Hey, I tell you, if they, if if he if Arch Manning becomes a star, that'll be something else. That'll be uh, three generations. I mean, I would probably bet that there's better chance of that actually happening than not happening. I mean, at this point, why not? But on that note, remember uh, rate, download, review, and subscribe. Thank you so much for everyone for listening again this week. And Frank, have a little song if you have one. Well, I I had a good song at the beginning. I don't really have a song in my head right now, but just watch my vlogs, especially uh, my newest vlog. And, of course, the Feltman's, if you uh, get the recipe for the apple pie hot dog, use Feltman's. So it's actually a good thing. So you could have baseball, apple pie, and Chevrolet. Baseball, apple pie, hot dogs, and Chevrolet. Baseball, hot dogs, apple pies, and Chevrolet. Remember, click like, right, rate, and subscribe. And baseball, hot dogs, apple pie, and Chevrolet. And have a good day.